Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to go over my last video, a little bit of uh, my last video about the whole intersex deal. Uh, I <laughs> th I like to thank the people that commented positively. It really helps, and I'm not trying to be like one of those individuals that's a real. Uh, how do you say it? Trailblazer for the mo for being intersex, and it's just that I wanted to get this off my chest and out there, and I saw it as a part of me progressing and coping with the whole thing, the whole situation, and um, and I was I go. Sometimes I go over other people's uh, videos, other intersex individuals, and there's, you know, there's a lot of different variations, obviously, but there's also a lot of similarities. A lot of people I've known or s seen their videos, they've had to cope with it, they had to cope with depression, they had to cope with a lot of um, emotional issues, they had to, we all had to deal with this, it's nothing unique, it's basically, you know, some of it's fear of being judged, some of, some of it's the social environment, some of it is actually chemical imbalance, but it's not one single contributing factor in it. It's whatnot. And there are a lot, well, I, I run into a lot of or see a lot of intersect videos of people who say that they were diagnosed as being bipolar. I wasn't diagnosed as being bipolar. I wasn't happy. I was manic depressant, which means that I heart, well, maybe once in a while I was overly happy, but that's mainly because I've had I was around friends, and intersex wasn't the issue at the moment, so, anyways, and past few years when I have been happy, it was coming out to, or not completely coming out, but talking to people about what happened, because when I was a kid, the only person in my life I felt 100% comfortable talking to it about was my grandmother, and she passed away a long time ago. But that's a different thing. And I understand the anxiety. I obviously. And I'm going to try to lay out my whole life history or try to summarize it for the remain remainder of the few minutes on this. I'm going to try to keep it to 10 minutes. I was born in a little town in Oregon. Oregon's a very progressive state. Very uh, blue state. Very tolerant. Especially in this part of Oregon, the northwest, Portland, whatnot. And... <laughs> Me and my friends always like to say Portland's like the poor man San Francisco. You've got all sorts of people here. But you also run into a lot of the other factor, too. Can't have one without the opposite here the, as contrast. But enough of that. When I was a kid, well, probably about two or three, after two or three years after I was born, and they knew all this, they knew that I had 
ambiguous genitalia, I had development issues, I've had lots of this or that. That goes with intersex. Um, before the surgery, my mom took me all the way to Oklahoma with her. My dad, after a while, my grandparents, my dad's parents, made him go and get me. He went and got me and brought me back to Oregon, where he used his work's insurance to fix me all up. That's what they viewed it as, anyway. But, you know, the surgery, the archiplexy, the uh, treatment with the hormones, this or that, and years later I trying to understand why my in school I accidentally saw other boys <laughs> boys down there and I didn't understand one they were circumcised I was not and two why theirs were bigger which confused the hell out of me. Pardon my language there. A few years got later, my grandmother, my dad, my aunt, my grandfather told me my mom just basically gave me up to them. I never saw my mom. Or never remember seeing my mom. Which is odd since I do remember vaguely the surgery. And it's been a long time. Anyways. They explained to me what happened with my mom. And I knew there were... Before they explained that to me, they explained to me a little bit of my condition. As best as they could do from some people who weren't off very well educated to a kid that could not understand fully in medical or biological or physical terms or whatever it wasn't like they were trying to hide it they just didn't completely understand it and of course the doctors instructed them to raise me as a boy despite what medical or I have it down there in the records despite genetic outcomes it's in there it's on there and I've got it underlined but anyways after that then they, they explained to me that my mom apparently didn't want me this was their words which I think it was much bull crap but anyways then when I got a little later when it was like well, r even right after then, I felt like an enigma, like, okay, for one, this one parent's not here, and I have this condition that some people look at as not, as being not a good thing to have, that some people look at as being a freak. So this means I'm a freak. So this means this parent, my mom, didn't want me because I was a freak. And that haunted me until my early 20s. When I, you know, I'm dealing with all this issue. But I cried myself to sleep when I was a kid because of this assumption. I know now as an adult that's bullshit. But when you're a kid, that's what you're thinking. But it still left a scar on me to this day. Because I, I know it's bullcrap, but still. And I got, like, maybe into when I was, like, 19, my, um... 1920, 
Well, in high school, I dropped out freshman, or no, sophomore year because somebody found out. And I was so scared out of my mind that I dropped out. And I was going through the motions and being depressed. And then a couple years later, my dad, my grandmother, I think it was 19 maybe, maybe, yeah, 18 or 19, they got me on testosterone. I don't know why they waited that long, but I took testosterone on and off for nearly 13 years, and I still look really young. I haven't shaved much, so I don't know what's the matter with my body, besides being intersex. But anyways, and past couple years, as I was slowly going towards trying, well, trying to go into the direction, the more masculine, it just made me feel like I was leaving, leaving an old friend, if that makes any sense. It made me feel... Well, when you're a guy... You, guy's body is their skin's not... Is, it's rough. It's rougher than women's skin. And I liked having soft skin. I also liked having the curves. And whatnot. So, and I explained that to my therapist last time I talked to her. And... Somehow, taking the testosterone also made me very numb inside. Not actual physical numb. That would really be bad. But emotionally. And I know I used to drive everybody crazy with my emotional whatnot, but I actually miss that. And that's why on one of my my earlier videos I stated I'm really considering transitioning back but you know for somebody who is both unemployed and doesn't have a lot of money that's kind of hitting a brick wall or a speed trap I'm hoping just a speed trap <laughs> Anyways, er, yeah, the little bumps and roads. Anyways, this is, uh, Wolf Dog signing off. And if you want, refer to me, which I prefer, the Raven Queen's fine. Thanks.